My first wife, Mrs. Hunsinger, passed away on a brain tumor. And if we had the brain scanner during that time, I think I could have saved my wife. And that gave me the idea to buy it for our community hospital. The scanner is a new technology, a means of seeing details of the human brain and body never seen before without surgery. It was invented and developed at EMI's research laboratories near London. It's called computerized axial tomography, CT for short. It's a revolutionary marriage between the X-ray and the computer. And it's the biggest breakthrough in medical diagnosis since the discovery of X-rays. The scanners have advanced rapidly across the world. They've brought CT into the heart of Europe where X-rays were first discovered. Into action in Berlin goes EMI's 5005, its latest body scanner. The world's first CT patient was scanned in London in 1971. Now, millions have undergone this test, which gives a successful diagnosis in nine cases out of ten. St. Louis, gateway to the American West, and home of the Mallinckrodt Institute, so the world's biggest X-ray complex. In intercom, okay? now just have you With this revolutionary X-ray examination, it's as though the doctors can hinge our body open at any point. Part of the machine in here will move around you. Scanning at first took several minutes, so the early machines were for brain study, as the head could be kept still for this long. The much faster body scanner came later. Trials were held jointly at British and American centres. These included the Mallinckrodt Institute, headed by Dr. Ron Evans. Well, we did the first patient in the United States in October of 1975, which uh, turned out to be a very exciting one. We felt from the beginning that the question of medical from surgical jaundice, the patient who has yellow jaundice who comes in, many of those have hepatitis. It's a disease of the liver itself in which uh, surgery doesn't help. That decision is very difficult to be made and we felt CT could do it. The first patient we studied, it was an absolutely perfect study, study that I still use in talks about how uh, good it was and we made the decision that it was surgical jaundice and correctly. Okay, so there we have the aorta, cava. CT is steadily replacing the old methods of investigation. Invasive, often uncomfortable, they used to be the only way to look at organs like the pancreas, which aren't accessible to ordinary x-rays. To study the brain could involve undesirable procedures. Okay, it's going to be a little pain in your head. Okay, the air is going into your ventricle system, into your brain. Okay, there will be some pain. A pneumoencephalogram, which is an air study that people talk about, we used to do two or three of those a day. A, a lumbar puncture or a needle is put into the spinal canal and air is injected and essentially let it bubble up okay. into the head. And then the patient is put in all kinds of funny positions. Now that's a study that uh, is at the very top of my list of studies that I wouldn't want done to myself. Now with CT, we're doing one of those a week. Sometimes we don't do any in a week. Now to the two or three patients a day that we've saved that study, and especially if that patient was me, that test CT is worth one heck of a lot. All the way down, your head will be close to the ground. We're going to take a picture in this position. X-rays were discovered, accidentally, in 1895. The discoverer was a German physicist, Wilhelm Röntgen, remembered by a museum at his birthplace in the Rhineland. Röntgen, who'd been studying cathode rays, exposed his wife, Anna Bertha, for 15 minutes, and the world was amazed by its first X-ray, the bones of a woman's hand. Röntgen tested the properties of X-rays. They pass easily through all soft tissue, so it's hard to distinguish abnormalities. Röntgen won the first Nobel Prize for Physics in 1901. His discovery makes an enormous contribution.
that the equipment gets more sophisticated, but X-rays suffer from a major limitation. They stay a two-dimensional record in which organs appear superimposed on one another. X-rays are short of a new dimension to unseat the basic photographic technique that stays unchanged for three quarters of a century. It comes with CT. At EMI, there's royal recognition and a meeting with its inventor, Godfrey Hounsfield. He's an EMI scientist looking for new areas where computers could be of benefit. Where better than X-rays, still producing Röntgen's vague shadowgrams. Tests begin on a rig built from an old lathe. X-ray data is fed into a computer. Would it show up density differences in animal tissues as well as it does on the Perspex model? Hansville searches for specimens where he can find them. I had to go around to abattoirs and cut out brains from cows. But unfortunately, these were damaged by their method of killing. So that um, we found ourselves traveling across London to the uh, uh, Jewish kosher houses in which they, they uh, killed by bleeding the bullocks. And uh, it was quite a job carrying these across London in a paper bag to put on the machine. The ventricles did show up very well and it was just a matter then of making a clinical machine to prove that it would work on live patients. A machine was built and taken for trials at London's Atkinson Morley's Hospital. Dr. James Ambrose. This is the very first CT scanner which was ever made. It was installed here in 1971. And on October the 1st, we scanned our first patient in it. Uh, this patient was actually a middle-aged female patient with a suspected tumor in the left frontal lobe. And we saw the brain in a great deal more detail than we'd expected. Uh, we were able to identify uh, cortex, white matter, the ventricular system, and the cystic tumor which was present in this patient's frontal lobe. This was successfully operated on, and this was the result which caused Hounsfield and myself to, uh, I suppose really to uh, jump up and down like uh, footballers who just scored a winning goal. Sit up on the table first of all, okay? And swing your legs up that end and your head goes in here. The brain was an ideal first target. Its soft tissue is very difficult to see on a conventional x-ray. If CT worked on the brain, it would work anywhere. Not least, CT meant an end to the anguish of many traditional brain investigations. I'm only too pleased to find that, that, that uh, we could just put a head in a hole in the machine and within a few minutes produce a series of pictures without any discomfort at all to the patient. After the trial here, CT was introduced to America, where three million brain scans were made in only three years. CT of the head is definitely established. It's a technique that's demonstrated its improvement in patient care. It's been able to reduce more complicated and uh, difficult procedures, which has been better for the patient, the physician, the hospital, everyone. And there's now enough data that shows that it's a, a cost-beneficial study as well that will ultimately become the first test after the physician feels that something may be wrong with the patient's head. More costly, yes, but a decision of which I believe Planners, patients, physicians, everybody will agree it's worth the money to have. With his first body machine, Hounsfield carries on the Röntgen tradition of the family snapshot. The first body picture I took was of myself, and um, I was very amazed to see what I looked like inside. We got quite a number of volunteers after that to see how beautiful they looked inside. Have you had yours taken? Uh... CT scanning was introduced in 1972 at America's big annual convention of radiologists in Chicago. Since then, it's been the talking point of each convention. I think the, uh, the historical points about CT is that it ranks with the discovery of Röntgen of the X-ray and perhaps ranks with the discovery of the stethoscope. The other point I think is interesting is to envision where it fits in the history of medicine. The CT, it, difficult to, to place really when Godfrey Hansfield made his invention because it was a series of research projects over a period of years. But it became clinically available 
in 1973, and the body machine became available in 1975, so 80 years after Röntgen's discovery. But if you think of hundreds of years of medical science, 80 years of radiology, and three or less years of CT, the impact that CT has uh, had on medical care is uh, very important. The new system can scan the head as well, but there's a special machine just for studying the head. It can focus on the optic nerve or go down to the larynx. EMI's CT 1010. Medical students the world over have long learned about anatomy by studying the dead. Um, Mr. Chadwick's uh, had a problem. At Manchester University in Britain, CT enables Professor Isherwood to show his students the anatomy of a live subject. Uh, some abnormalities which may be related to the pancreas, and we're going to investigate those this morning. Now, Mr. Chadwick is going to have a, a computer tomographic investigation on the EMI whole body scanner. Ordinary x rays, no matter how sophisticated you make them, are going to be shadow grams. Structures are superimposed one on the other. The new advance with computed tomography is to enable one to reconstruct the substance of organs and diseases affecting those organs by a computer method. And what uh, it enables us to do is to look at the horizontal cross-section of the patient in this computed way by putting enough uh, information in about the amount of x-rays going in and recording how much comes out. If you do that sufficiently uh, often and in a sufficient number of times, one can compute the information about the structure through which the x-rays have passed. And we can deduce information about the ability of those structures to absorb x-rays and then reconstruct them by computer methods. What we'd like to see is a horizontal cross-section of the body like this. And this is at a level uh, where the pancreas uh, would be expected to be. Now on the CT scan here, we're just sectioning the kidneys. There's one kidney. And the black area in the middle is the hilum of the kidney, uh, which is full of urine, full of water. So it appears black on here. And this organ stretched across it must be the pancreas. What computed tomography is enabling us to see, in addition, are the two lower density areas. These are two cysts in the head of the pancreas, which are expanding the pancreas and produced by blocking of the pancreatic ducts. And it's the sort of thing we might be looking for in Mr. Chadwick. Now, if you'd like to gather around this, uh, this is a lead glass window, and you can just see Mr. Chadwick is in the uh, hole in the middle of the polo mint. Uh, there. Uh, the polo mint consists of uh, um, an x-ray tube at one side and a series of x-ray detectors at the other. And those will move round him uh, when we're taking the appropriate exposures, uh, putting in known amounts of x-ray and computing what comes out. So we're literally taking an x-ray slice across him. Now here we're looking at uh, the first section through uh, Mr. Chadwick. Here's his initials on here. And here's his vertebral body. This is the liver and part of the spleen over here. And we're beginning to get hints here, can you see, of calcification, which we couldn't see on the plant films, in the tail of the pancreas. And if you look carefully there, there's a, a black ring in that area, which is very like that cyst we were looking at in the other patient, in the head of the pancreas. CT has shown it can cut down the time patients spend in hospital. It also makes it possible for many to be examined as outpatients. But the scanner helps those too who weren't even planning to go to hospital. 21 year old female with a severe head injury, a vehicular accident, Lakeshore Drive at the S turn. Our arrival Chicago's got nearly 150 hospitals. Of the 80-odd big ones, already one in three has gone over to CT, and the number's going up all the time. One hospital's even got three scanners.